How many of you uh, married folks out there could relate to that a little bit? I don't know about you, but I could. Hey, I've got a, a great message for you here this morning uh, on the fruit of the Spirit. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we're just so thankful for who you are and what you've already done. Lord, your word says in your presence there is fullness of joy. And God, I believe that we were led into your presence this morning uh, through worship and praise. As the word says, I will enter your gates with thanksgiving in my heart and enter your courts with praise. God, we thank you for our worship leaders that were up here. And we thank you that we were able and we live in a free country where we can worship you freely and express our gratitude to you. And God, we just give you all the glory and praise. Holy Spirit, we just ask that you speak to our hearts, God. We focus on you. We want to hear what you have to say to the church today. And we set aside all distractions. In Jesus' name, everyone said, Amen. Amen. All right. Um, as we talked about last week, we began a new series called Cultivate. And um, the, uh, the premise of this series is that the Holy Spirit wants to give us the fruit of the Spirit. And the way He does that is He gives us the fruit of the Spirit in seed form. But it's up to us to cultivate that seed and turn it into a, a fruit. And what, for instance, what did Jesus say? You shall know them by their gifts, right? You shall know them by their skills and abilities. No, he said you shall know them, you know of a person by their fruit. So show me a person that's full of love and I'll show you a Christian. Show me a person that's full of joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, self-control, all those things that we're going to be talking about over the next few weeks, and I'll show you a person that is full of the Holy Spirit. And uh, by the way, that's, that's a biblical term. Uh, oftentimes, the Bible in the New Testament would say, and so-and-so was filled with the Holy Spirit, or so-and-so was full of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so uh, I don't know about you, but I don't want to just be filled. I want to be full to overflowing. David said, my cup runs over. And uh, I want to be so full of the Holy Spirit that it runs over and leaks out into the lives of others. Amen. So let's look at this second uh, part of love. Remember last week we started with love, but joy is love's expression of enthusiasm. Joy is love's enthusiasm. Remember there's a first fruit and it's love. And I believe there are nine expressions of the fruit of the Spirit that we're going to go over the next few weeks, and joy is an expression of love. So, uh, uh, and, and I, I'll, go, I'll go so far as to say this, you can't have joy unless you have love. Now, you can have happiness, but let me say that happiness, in the very nature of the word, depends on what happens. So happiness comes when everything's going good. And we're on that roller coaster and we're on that high. That's happiness. But joy comes, the Bible says, in the morning. Joy comes in the low times. Joy is not only when we're high in life, but in those low, hard times of adversity, we can come and experience the joy of the Lord. Amen? And uh, that's the difference between joy and happiness. So let's look at the Bible, what it says, Psalms 19.8. I love this. Uh, because this, if, if you don't learn anything else today, if you just understand this scripture right here, you're going to get it. But it says, the precepts, or the principles, or the concepts, or what's, what you glean out of the word to apply into your life of the Lord are right. Is that truth? Yes. Bringing joy to the heart. Oftentimes, we lose our joy or we don't have joy because we get off of the path of the Word of God and go into something else that we think that we want for self and it's, it's a pathway that leads to destruction and, and uh, sadness, isn't it? I don't know about you, but I, in my own life, I've experienced going down the wrong road and I've experienced going down the right road. I'd rather be on that right road. Um, Look at what the, the next scripture says, and this is where we're getting our series out of. But the fruit of the Spirit, the result of His presence within us. You say, how do I cultivate love? How do I cultivate joy? All these things. 
Get in His presence. Get in the presence of God. Worship God. Get in that presence. There is fullness of joy there. And so it says the, pre- the result of the, His presence within us is love, unselfish concern for others. And we defined last week the definition of love. Love is satisfying everyone else at the expense of self. Whereas lust, the other road, is satisfying self at the expense of everyone else. Now, I don't know about you, but I, too many times in my life, I've gone down the road of lust. It's me, 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 self, 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 self. And, you know, sorry, other people. But I want to be one that walks, and that's what our flesh wants to do, doesn't it? I want to be one that walks in the way of love and thinks about everyone else, and that way I'll have true joy. Uh, Let's look at uh, this next, the Greek word for joy, because this is very interesting. Where does joy come from? The Greek word for joy is kara. Anybody got any friends named kara? We've got a kara in the church, and, and she's not here today, but um, uh, if, when you see her next week, you tell her that her name means joy in the Greek. Kara is derived from the word charis. We, we, we say, have you ever heard of a charismatic? Charis is the Greek word for grace. So joy is a derivative of grace. You get joy from the grace of God. That's good news today. We get joy because of the grace of God. We can't earn joy. We don't deserve joy. There's nothing we can do. But God, through His grace, can give us a seed of joy, and then we can cultivate that seed and turn into much fruit. So joy comes from the grace of God. It's not human-based happiness, like we said. It's not happiness depends on what happens. It comes and goes. True joy comes from the Holy Spirit. Let me say that again. True joy comes from the Holy Spirit and is particularly manifested, this is the key, in times of adversity. Listen, if you're going through a storm, if you're going through a hard time, the joy of the Lord is your strength. It will carry you through. It will get you through the end by the grace of God. And, uh, and, and it, it, it does look dark sometimes, but there is light at the end of that tunnel. Amen? So, uh, when we go through those times, and I believe these, these fruit of the Spirit, these expressions of love are for different times in our life. I don't know if we'll have all nine expressions at one time, but when we're going through a hard time, we need that joy. When we're going through a storm, uh, we can also talk about next week's topic, which we need peace. And by the way, please, please tell all your friends and family members and everybody to be here next week because you're going to hear from a couple that I'm going to interview in my message. I've got a great message on peace, but you're going to hear from a couple that found peace even though they were sucked out of their house and slammed on the ground by a tornado and their house was completely destroyed in Canton, Texas. You're also going to hear from that same couple that a year before that, they lost their son to a tragic death. Now in times like that, how can you find peace from God? Only supernatural, only the Holy Spirit, only the fruit of the Spirit. So don't miss next week. You're going to love that. Okay, now, there's, I, want to, I want to focus on three ways this morning to lose joy. Because if we understand how do I... I used to be, if you think about yourself, and, and maybe years ago you used to have that joy, but David prayed like this. He said, don't let me lose the joy of my salvation. Jo- In other words, joy can be in our spirit, but joy can also be taken away. So, uh, so I'm going to talk about three ways that we lose our joy. And by the way, the devil comes to steal it, but he can only steal it if we allow him to. It's like if, if I, and I've used this example before, but if I have the Word of God up here, and I called someone up and I said, steal this from me, and I kind of just loosely hold on to it, It's easy to steal, but if I guard it with my life and I'll fight you over it, it's going to be hard to steal it. Same thing is true with joy. If you'll keep it in your spirit and guard your heart with all diligence and you'll guard it and you'll fight the enemy off of it, he won't take it away from you. But let's talk about how, and this has happened to me, there's been times in my life where I've lost my joy. Let's be honest this morning. Is there anybody in here that has lost their joy before? Yeah. I'm looking at a bunch of honest people and a few liars, so that's great. Uh, 
So let's talk about three ways this morning. One way is to place your focus on circumstances. You want to lose your joy? Start looking at the circumstances. Peter was looking at Jesus, walking on the water just fine, started looking at the waves, and he sank. If you want to lose your joy, start looking at circumstances, because circumstance, again, again, depends on what happens. If the circumstances are good, oh good, I'm happy. If the circumstances are bad, oh, I'm sad. And if we ride that roller coaster of emotions and feelings all our life, we'll go through those ups and downs. So do not place your focus, keyword, focus on circumstances. Look at what the scripture says. Consider it pure joy. I love this scripture because I know that when uh, I've quoted this before and God has uh, brought this to my spirit, one of the things I've said is, you've got to be kidding, God. I mean, I just had a flat tire, God. Consider it pure joy when you have a flat tire. <laughs> Consider it pure joy when the doctor gives you a bad report. Consider it pure joy when you have a rebellious teenager. Consider it pure joy when your wife leaves you for another man. No, don't be thinking this is all, that, that's, that hasn't happened with Amy, okay? Don't be, don't be saying, man, you need counseling after church or anything like that. But you know what I'm talking about. Consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. But that's not all. Let perseverance finish its work that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So God has a testing process. How many of you know God wants to take us from the second grade to the third grade sometimes? And the way we have to get into the third grade is we've got to pass some tests. Or maybe you're in the fifth grade and you're going to the sixth. Or maybe you're going into junior high with God or high school or college or postgraduate work. I don't know where you're at in your spiritual journey, but there will be a test. And new levels equals new devils. But you just let perseverance have its work. You keep on. Well, you know what the Bible's saying there? Keep on plowing. Keep on plowing. I remember one time when uh, Amy was asked to play in a wedding at a big, big church over in the Park Cities area. And there was every wedding, I've done over 100 weddings, and every wedding has a wedding Nazi. <laughs> in, in, in fact, amen, Sister Kay. When, when, I, when I come to, a, a, when I'm asked to do a wedding and it's rehearsal time, my first question is, who's the wedding Nazi? You know, because who do I, who's going to be rebuking me and telling me, no, you did that all wrong, or no, no. And there, it, sometimes it's the mother of the bride, sometimes it's a wedding coordinator or wedding planner or whatever. But how many of you know there's a wedding Nazi of every wedding? And thank God for them. Because the wedding Nazi makes sure everybody marches in order and everything is done in order and everything <laughs> is correct. Yavor, you know. And so thank God for all that. But I was on a long fast at this particular time in my life. And I mean, how many of you ever been on a fast? And you're just glowing. You're getting so much revelation from God. And you're just in his presence. And you just got this joy. And my face was just beaming. You know, was just, man, this is awesome. You know, and I was over there just smiling. I had a grin from ear to ear. And this wedding Nazi marches in this church. And she's all right. Nobody leaves the stalak. No, she didn't say that, but she, was, she might as well. And, and she was giving out orders, and she looked over at me, and she goes, what are you smiling at? Now, keep in mind, this is a Christian church. And I, I said, ah, it's just the joy of the Lord, you know, and I'm over there kind of giggling and stuff. She goes, well, quit that. We don't have time for that. And, and I'm like, man, isn't that sad that you can get so busy in your work that you miss out on the joy of the Lord. Don't ever get so busy in your work or in whatever you're doing that you miss out on the joy of the Lord or the joy of your family, the joy of your kids growing up, the joy of, of, of a lot of things. You know, test yourself and make sure you're not too um, Nazi-ish on that, <laughs> if that's a word. <coughs> Excuse me. Place your focus on circumstances. Secondly, the second way to lose your joy is to place your focus on me, me, me. You know, we, Amy and I counsel a lot of people a lot of times, and sometimes this is our counsel to people. 
because we'll be talking to someone who's always at home and, and raising kids or something like that, and they're just suffering from this depression. And you know what our advice to them is? We, this is what we say. Thus saith the Lord, go get a job. Short and sweet. If God didn't think a job was so important, he wouldn't put a book in the Bible named Job. Oh, wait, no, that's Job. I'm just kidding. But, no, seriously. I mean, if we sit at home all day and have a pity party that we invite everybody to and nobody wants to show up and we're just poor me and victim, victim, victim. How many of you know what I'm talking about? How many of you know? And, and we just get so bogged down in, in, oh, this isn't right and that's not right and unhappy with self that we end up just in a mess. And God wants to say, man, get up out of that. Start serving others. Start working. Start doing something productive with your life. Take the focus off self and put it on everyone else. And you'll get a joy out of that. How many of you, most all of you I know, have experienced the joy of serving another person? Of doing something kind, doing a, an act of kindness, or doing something for someone else. And you just see, it's just such a Good feeling of joy inside. Look at what the scripture says about this. If you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying, for jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder of every evil kind. We can't get so sideways that we're all about me, me, me. The third way to lose our joy this morning is place your focus on broken relationships. Can I tell you there are people that are suffering from a lack of joy because of a broken relationship that happened years and years ago? And I'm speaking from experience on this because I went through a divorce early on in my life. And I had a broken relationship. And unfortunately for my beautiful wife, I carried those bags into my next relationship. And it was not fair to her. And God actually spoke to me one day. And he said, that's not fair, Rex. The way, the way you're treating her, you're, you're looking at her like she's like every other, uh, or like the other wife you had. That's not fair. That's not right. And he basically said, quit it. That's how God talks to me. I don't know how he talks to you. <laughs> but it was like, quit it, homeboy. Come on, suck it up. Be a man. Serve your wife. Come on, man. Love your wife. I mean, it was like, I was like, I'm so sorry, sir. Uh, <laughs> you're right. And, and you know, and uh, it took me, Amy will tell you. I mean, maybe she'll tell you that. It's still taking me years, but... Um, it took me five years and then at least probably ten years to figure out this and to, to drop all those bags. Let all that go. Don't place a focus on broken relationships. You will lose your joy every time. This is what the scripture says about that. A cheerful heart. How many of you want a cheerful heart this morning? Yes. Is a good medicine. Man, we can get health and healing. That's when somebody's in the hospital... I give them healing scriptures, and I also give them humor. I try to make them laugh in their hospital bed. In fact, one time, we visited a guy who had a horrible accident. And you've seen those guys in, the, in an old commercial that said, got milk? And he, this guy was in a body cast, and they were feeding him an Oreo through the, the little mouth opening, and he needed some milk. This guy was like that. He was all body casted up. I'll never forget it. His name was Freddie, and he was laid up in the hospital. Terrible accident. In fact, me and another pastor traveled all the way to Texarkana just to pray for him. And so we went all the way and we laid hands on him and we prayed the prayer of faith and then we started cracking jokes. And this is what happened to him. He started going, <laughs> oh, that hurts my ribs. <laughs> oh, you guys quit it. I'm hurting here. And we kept laughing. We, a spirit of laughter just came on that room, and we were laughing, and we were belly laughing. Did you know that guy got out of the hospital in half the amount of time he should have? Because a merry heart, a cheerful heart, does good like a medicine. 
And some of us, our prescription needs to be, you just need to laugh. <laughs> you just need to laugh. You just need to break down and just laugh. Some of you may have not laughed in years, but God, thus saith the Lord, you need to laugh. Thank you if you were laughing there. But the, Bi the Bible in Proverbs does a comparison. But a broken heart, someone who focuses on broken relationships that loses their joy, it saps a person's strength. Or the King James says, it drieth the bones. So you see here that a merry heart laugh. That's, why, that's one reason we show a funny video during offering time. There's two reasons. Because a merry heart or a cheerful heart does good like a medicine. And secondly, because God loves a cheerful giver. And everybody loves it. So who doesn't like to laugh? I don't know. If you don't like to laugh, man, uh, see me afterwards. I'll try my best chokes on you, okay? We'll see. <laughs> but that's, that's way to lose your joy. Let's talk about the important thing. How do we cultivate the joy? And so I'm going to wrap this up real quick and ask the musicians to come. I'm really trying to focus on not speaking so long, okay? I'm, I'm going to really try to, I'm, 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 I'm making sure that I get this one done in time so you guys can all beat the Baptist to uh, Luby's or wherever you're going today, all right? But focus on thankfulness. This is a way to cultivate joy. You want joy in your life? Take off these glasses Take off these glasses that focus on circumstances. Take off these glasses that focus on self. And take off these glasses that focus on broken relationships. You know why? Because when you talk to people, when you interact with people, when you have relationships with people, everything will be about that broken relationship I had 10 years ago. And I just can't seem to get over it because this is all I see. And God is speaking to you today and thus saith the Lord, take off thy silly glasses. And focus, if you're going to focus on self, do it in a thankful way. God, I am so thankful. I go to the greatest church in America. God, I am, thank you. Thank, God, I, I, oh yes, yeah, standing. Oh, thank you, Lord. We have the greatest worship team at our church. That. That is the, one of the greatest pastors I've ever known. Oh, thank you. We got the greatest brothers and sisters out here that I can do life with. Woo! We live in the greatest state in all of America, I believe. We live in the greatest country in the world. USA! USA! Right? Now, if you want to move to Canada or Mexico, that's fine. I go there for vacation, but I come back to the greatest nation in America, in the world, right? And so there's so many things to be thankful for. And this is what I always say. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but it's about that James scripture. Count it pure joy, brothers and sisters, when you go through these hard trials. If you have a flat tire, then thank God for the 9,999 other parts that are working right on your car. Don't curse the flat... Thank you, God, that the engine works. The air can do. God, it's in the middle of the sun. Why do flat tires always either happen in the rain or in the heat? Man, I don't know. But God, thank you for this flat tire. And thank you for this jack that I'm using. And thank you that I can call if I want to the, uh, whatever it is, the, the highway people, and they'll come and do this for me. You know, thank you, God, for all these things that we are spoiled to for living in the United States of America. And listen, if you ever catch yourself being unthankful, please Please go with us on a mission trip. Go with Suzanne down to Columbia. See how the rest of the world lives. You'll come back thanking God for everything you have. Yeah. If you've got an ungrateful teenager in your house, send them on a mission trip. Right? Yeah. Focus on thankfulness. This is what the scripture says about this. Be thankful. The King James says, in everything, give thanks. This, NLT, I like this. Be thankful. In all circumstances, no matter what happens, for this is God's will. What, well, Pastor, what is God's will for my life? Be thankful. Be thankful in everything. This is God's will for those who belong to Christ Jesus. It reminds me, and I, I told this joke to a couple people at the 
Valentine's dinner, which we had a fabulous Valentine's dinner. Thank you, Danny and Robert and everybody that put that together. But it reminded me of this. There was a guy who was fed up living in America, had all the blessings. He was only 25 years old, but he was fed up with life. So he said, that's it. I'm out of here. I'm going to the Tibet, and I'm going to be a monk. So he traveled all the way to Tibet, met a, uh, the head of the monastery, and he said, I want to change. I'm tired of the rat race in America. I'm just, you know, everything, just forget it. I want to be a monk. And the guy said, okay. But to be a monk, you have to take two vows, a vow of poverty and a vow of silence. So every 10 years, you get two words to say, and that's it. And he said, okay, I take those vows. And so he served for 10 years as a monk, and he comes before the head monk, and the head monk says, you have two words you can say. What would you like to say? He goes, food, bad. And then he walks back away and starts serving and doing his thing. And 10 years go by now, he's 45 years old. And he goes to the head monk, and the monk says, okay, you have two words. Again, it's been 10 years. What would you like to say? And he goes, bed, hard, and then walked away. And then, now this guy is 55 years old. He's been serving in the monastery for 30 years. And he comes to the head monk, and the head monk says, would you like to say two more words? And he says, I quit. And the head monk said, no wonder. All you've done since you've been here is complain. But yet I wonder if that's the way God feels sometimes. When all we do in our prayer life is complain. You know, all we do is, is, and we forget to enter His gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. And come into His courts with praise. And we should start every prayer, every, every time we talk and communicate with God, I believe, with thanksgiving. Say, God, I thank you for who you are and what you've done. I thank you for everything you've given me and all the blessings and just, man, I challenge you, if you're struggling from depression or you have lost your joy every morning when you first wake up, think about God and His goodness and just start thanking Him. I bet it'll change your life forever. Right? So be thankful. Secondly, the second way to do this is focus on serving others. You know, it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about the kingdom of God, which involves a lot of people. And Jesus came to serve everyone else. The Bible says he lowered himself in the form of a servant, and he made sure that everyone else's needs were met first. This is what the scripture says, and I love this scripture. Make my what? Joy! Joy! complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing, do nothing, do absolutely nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. Not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of others. If you want joy, be thankful Start serving others. And finally, the third thing as I wrap up, focus on God and eternity. Focus on God. You see, there was a lady that went to a church for many, many years. And every Sunday, the pastor could count on her coming up to him, either before the service or after. Complain, 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 complain. And there's something wrong with this person and that person and this person's a hypocrite and that person gossips and this person and that person and all oh, this frustration she had with her church body. And so she finally came up to the pastor right before service and she said, you know what, pastor? I'm quitting. I'm leaving the church. You know what the pastor said? He said, okay, but just this was a Sunday morning. People were starting to come in, get their seats. He said, just do one thing for me. Take a cup, go out to the lobby, and fill it to the brim with water. And all during our service, I want you to walk around the, the, the building and don't spill a drop of water, even though it's filled to the brim. And she said, okay, I'll do that. And so 
after the service the pastor met with her and she said and he said did you did you see sister Sally or whatever that has a gossiping problem did you see brother Joe that has a, a problem with his lifestyle and he's a hypocrite did you see this person and that person this person and that person and she said no I didn't see any of that I was too busy focusing on the water and not spilling a drop and the pastor said if you will put your focus on God like you put your focus on that cup of water you're gonna get your joy back and you're gonna have a whole new life and you're gonna see the value of everyone else instead of the flaws of everyone else amen and man you know you can you can if you want to you can pick apart people you can pick apart me you can pick apart the church you can spend all your life doing that but you're gonna miss out on the joy of relationships of seeing the value of others rise and seeing others come to life and fulfill their calling and their purpose in the kingdom of God can we go to the Lord in prayer this morning because I just sense like maybe this message hit us and, and like I said at the beginning of this series this message these messages are not necessarily for you as much as they are for me <laughs> I'm preaching at me today and so if it ministered to you that's great but if you're in here and you've been suffering from a lack of joy or a loss of joy would you just slip your hand up and be honest with God right now we're not gonna thank you thank you for your honesty with God thank you thank you all over the congregation we're not gonna embarrass you or anything but I'm just gonna pray a prayer God you see each one of the hands that were raised you see everyone Lord that is confessing to you and I and I confess Lord there's been times and and I can do better in this department Lord I need your joy Lord forgive me for the times that I focused on myself forgive me for the times that I focused on circumstances Lord forgive me for the times that I focused on broken relationships Lord I drop all those bags I put all those things behind me Lord and I focus on the true things of you Lord I want to focus on you and eternity and Lord, I want to spell joy like focus on Jesus, others, and then myself. But when I focus on myself, I'm going to do it in a spirit of thankfulness. Not a spirit of regret, not in a spirit of shoulda, woulda, coulda, or done this or done that in life. But on a spirit of thank you, Lord, that you know all things well. And there are seasons and it's beautiful in your time. And God, we just thank you for the beautiful path that you have set before us. It'll have challenges and it'll have steps and it'll have tests, but we thank you for those tests because as we pass through those, we go to the next level and the next level and the next level until we get to where you want us to be. God, we thank you for that. We praise you for it. Lord, we speak joy. We speak life. We speak, Lord, just a, a, a spirit. Let us cultivate the seed that you've given us and fight and not let the devil take it from us. Lord, we pray like David. Restore the joy of our salvation. And we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. 